Good morning, this is Shelby Law with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Friday, September 14th, 2018. We're continuing to deal with some major wind impacts over the next couple of days, particularly on Saturday over Utah, eastern Nevada, and southeast Idaho, where winds will gust upward of 50 miles an hour. Winds will also be gusty on Friday and Sunday uh, for much of these same areas, but the wind speeds won't be quite as high. Yesterday, some very isolated showers and thunderstorms move into the northern central Idaho mountains. The wind observed yesterday, particularly in Utah, has really caused problems for some large fires there, um, especially the Polk Creek fire there in central Utah. The observed precipitation for the past 7 and 30 days is shown here. The past 7 days have been quite dry across much of the area, and for the past 30 days, mainly Nevada, northwest Utah, and southwest Idaho have been quite dry. We have seen a little bit of a reduction in our ERCs over the far north associated with the cold front that's moved in a couple of days ago and some recent very light shower activity up there. However, further south over northern Nevada, northern Utah, and even into the central portion of the Great Basin there, those ERCs are still very high for the time of year. We are operating far outside of climatology right now. Taking a closer look at these values, especially over the higher elevations of Utah, we've seen the ERCs just shoot up the last couple of days with this very dry, uh, windy air mass that's moved in. Those values are near historical records or setting records for the time of year over the higher elevations in Utah and other portions of Utah and Nevada as well. Sagebrush live field moistures are shown here for a site in south central Idaho and in central Utah there where those values are at the historical minimums for the time of year which is um, near about 60 percent or so. This morning's satellite imagery continues to show the broad area of low pressure uh, located over the west coast and we can see the strong southwest flow in place over the Great Basin out ahead of that trough. So for this afternoon, our winds are going to be very strong uh, with a dry atmosphere, particularly over Utah, eastern Idaho, and eastern and southern Nevada, and then along the Sierra front as well. Minimum relative humidities are in single digits below 6 to 7 percent across much of the area. And the image on the right shows the, the regions that are going to see the strongest winds between 35 and maybe 45 miles an hour this afternoon over central and eastern Nevada and western Utah. On Saturday, the low drops a little bit further south and east, which will increase the wind speeds, particularly over Utah and eastern Nevada. And then we'll also see a chance for some isolated showers move into the central Idaho mountains. Minimum relative humidities actually come up just a bit on Saturday, but the wind speeds will be incredibly strong. The image on the right shows those deeper purples and maroons. Here we're looking at wind gusts 45, 50, 50 miles an hour over much of eastern Nevada and into western and northwest Utah. On Sunday, the wind gusts continue, but they'll lighten up just a bit. And the wind should decrease across western Nevada and we don't, where we don't have any high risk issued. The air mass dries out just a bit for Sunday and the winds continue over eastern Nevada and western Utah, although they'll be a little bit lighter with gusts in that 40 to 45 mile an hour range. Still very strong uh, for the time of year. The three day precipitation totals are shown here. Um, really just looking for a small chance of some isolated showers moving into those central Idaho mountains um, on Saturday. The winds continue to lighten up Monday into the middle of next week and we'll just continue to see that dry air mass in place across the region. Warm and dry conditions will continue through midweek next week as another trough begins to move into the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it doesn't look at this time like this trough is going to bring a whole lot of precipitation to the Great Basin, but possibly the mountains of central Idaho will see some precipitation by the end of the work week next week. The seven day precipitation totals are shown here. Um, really illustrating the dry atmosphere that's moving into the Great Basin. The extended forecast from the Climate Prediction Center for the 21st through the 27th is continuing to call for warm and dry conditions across the geographic area. This concludes today's fire potential briefing. Please check back tomorrow for the latest updates.